There we go. I think I had it set better. Yay! We are going to biohack some work today. I'm so excited. I think we have like 15 people. I think that's what Julie said. Uh, is uh, Just give me a thumbs up, Julie. Is the lighting okay back here? Can you hear me okay? All right. Okay. My little boy's here, but hopefully he won't. He, he'll he won't hear my cackling and come down and bug us too much. Oh, I'm in an epic. I'm in an epic auction right now. I'm like, I gotta win this auction. Okay. Oh, uh, is so uh, I'll tell you guys later. But super fun. Holidays are here. We got a big day tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm gonna jump start here. Let's see what time it is. We're right at two o'clock. Um, if anybody gets in late, I'm going to need the whole hour. So I am going to dive in here. Uh, the way we're going to do this is because of where the time is with the holidays, but also very important integration time. We're going to take a week and then we're going to come back and we're going to boom, 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 boom every day. There's going to be a session. So if you can make it there physically, great. So I think we're going to start Monday. Like we'll have this whole after today, we'll have a break. We're going to be integrating this work that we're doing today in. And then we'll do the other three classes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. And it will literally be boom, boom, boom. But we need a little bit of time to integrate all the work. Plus, you guys are going to be practicing some things that are going to come through through the channel uh, that you'll need to do to hold space for yourself. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the concept of this integration. I've done light language activations in the past. They've been super fun. They've really breaking through walls, breaking through barriers, accelerated people. I mean, I have seen some amazing, amazing things. And I'll tell you that I feel like my life really, really started when I, I started using my own light language. And if any of you guys are interested in, in getting your own, everybody has it. I'm not special. I have obviously that availability that I can do that with you one-on-one, -on -one, or we can um, bring you into our psychic surgery class that we're having as soon as we get a few more people in there, because it's a it's a pretty in, in detailed class, and Julie can post in the comments when that is. Psychic surgery is basically the using of quantum healing to do energetic surgery. It's it's energy medicine. Everything vibrates. So when we're working with quantum healing or light language or any sort of energy medicine whatsoever, we're working at the energy level. We're not going to work at the material level. The material level is very solid. It is very um, opinionated. It's very holding on. It's very judgy. And it's very difficult to work in an area that is already um, solidified. So when we're going to work with energy medicine, we're going to go all the way down into the roots of where the root produced the belief system, produced the trauma, produced the event, produced the disease, produced whatever. And we don't want to work at that surface level because literally when we work, you know, start hacking away at our bodies and, and go to our, our, you know, our medicinal type of post-manifestational doctors, they're going to look at you as they're going to look at your symptom as the issue. You know, they're going to look at, you know, your wrist hurting as the wrist, but we know that you're holistic and we know that the wrist means about 25 different things, right? The wrist is connected to the back. The wrist is about conflict in relationships. The wrist is about a hundred different things, right? So when we start hacking away at a wrist and we do not fix the underlying cause, then that issue will just pop up somewhere else. And I'm sure that you guys have noticed that when you kind of work in the material world on an issue that's physical, it literally will just pop up somewhere else and maybe have a different name, but pain is pain, right? This way, when we work it down into our energy signatures, our subatomic space in the vibration itself, we get to change the blueprint. And that is the most important thing when we're, when we're dealing with energy medicine. Okay, so it's like, we don't want to paint the kitchen when our foundation is weak. Because, you know, kitchen looks better for a minute, but it's like crooked. So we want to work in the underlying issues of vibration. All right, so we're in this like void right now space between dimensions of our own becoming. Now, so many people have asked me like, 
is fifth dimension a place? Am I going to get there? What's going to happen? And I just want to kind of do a very childlike explanation of dimensions, of energy, of energy medicine, just so that you feel that you understand what the heck you're doing here. Because some of you are like, why not? Here we are. And, you know, some of you are very more deliberate in this process, but it doesn't matter if you're here, you're here. And this idea of, of what this dimensional space is, is much like radio stations. All right. And each dimensional level is gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until basically there's just light. And as we are in what we call a third dimensional space, right, we have rules, Ugh. gravity, right, time and space. So we take time, we use space, we are held like here with our gravity. And this is where we learn how spiritual beings can live in a body, right, and how to maneuver it. So the reason why we're in the third dimension is so we can figure out how this works. We were never supposed to be trapped here. We're always supposed to be elevating back up into higher levels of our own awareness by making the body more malleable, okay? Although the body is governed by time, space, and gravity here, that this dimension is not the only dimension. You are in a, a planet called Earth, and Earth is the house of all 12 dimensions, which means every radio station can play here, okay? From third to first to 12, right? We've got everything. And again, there's many, 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 many dimensions, but we're just gonna kind of talk about 12 here today. That just kind of 12, you know, 12 hours, break up 24 hours. It's all about 12s, okay? We're just gonna talk about 12 dimensions today. And we're gonna be working with 12 dimensions and and that's as far as we need to go so we don't confuse you. But realistically, what we want to do here is we want to be malleable and we want to go where we want to go. Right? We feel stuck. We feel trapped. We feel blocked. And the only reason that we have those sensations or those belief systems or that awareness is because we have practiced a certain radio station, even if we haven't liked it. Have you ever guys heard a song and you're like, yeah, and then three weeks later you're singing it, right? So you kind of get attuned. You got to get stuck to something and not really know that you have a choice. So when you see people channeling, you know, you're like, wow, that's so cool. You have the same abilities. Like nobody is chosen for this job, by the way. Like this is something that you become because you're curious, because you're playing with energy, because you had a lot of trauma. I mean, a lot of things can shove you into different dimensions and you find yourself channeling by accident, but only because you were playing in different radio stations, not because you were chosen, not because so-and-so was special. Just because someone can access different radio stations and communicate different frequencies does not mean that they're better or closer to God than you. OK, all that means is that we have been curious, OK, or in the wrong place at the wrong time. And we got involved in different dimensions and it became accustomed to us. Right. That's it. That's it. And again, you know, we can talk about soul contracts and all that stuff. But realistically, I don't want anyone to think that they cannot do or be or feel or have any of these gifts that you see these other channels have, because you are just as qualified, you are just as worthy, you are just as important, and you are just as allowed to experiment, play. And the more you get rid of suffering, and the more you get rid of that problems in your life, the more you get more flexible with your radio stations. Because, you know, when you're focused on problems, all of your energy goes to that problem. When you're focused on your pain, all that energy goes to your pain. And then you get to different vibrations, there's not pain there, okay? There's not solidity, right? So we're going to look at third dimension kind of being our ice, cold, rigid, frozen, solid, right? Stuck, okay? It's, take the, it's taken a shape. You look at it, you know what it is, right? And what we want to do in this integration is bring you back to water. We want to get you traveling. We want to get you moving interdimensionally so that you have a lot more freedom to choose where 
and how you live. Because manifestation and creating your own reality comes down to one thing, and that's choice. But if you do not feel you have a choice, right, you will work with what you have and you will stay very solid. You'll try to maybe change your ice sculpture a little bit, but you won't get back to water. So this integration is the process of bringing your energy body back to that flow of water so that you can relax, receive change, change your mind, change your life, change your timelines, change your past, okay? That fork in the road that you're at right now, do I go this way, do I do this way? You'll just know because your river will be flowing. You won't have to like stand there and wait. You'll just flow, all right? So we're gonna use a lot of alchemy today, okay? And my students that are going through quantum fitness know that alchemy just means all of me. And so, There is versions of you, your consciousness that are in all the different dimensions, okay? Not just the third and then God's up there. You're more of a piece of the whole. You're more like a drop of the whole ocean. And if I put you back into that ocean, you'd still be the ocean, but you'd still be you, okay? So we want to kind of return you to the water, return you to the ocean, return you to the flow so that you can remember yourself. Put yourself back together. The only reason you have pain, the only reason you have abundance issues, the only reason you have time issues is because you are separated from yourself because something about you was judged or pushed away or, you know, you built a wall between a part of you that wasn't good enough and therefore you feel that separation. And without all of you, right? You get to be one tiny drop, but with all of you, you get to be the ocean. And that's really where we want to go. So dimensions are literally like radio stations. And you can tune in through frequency and vibration at any time, right? That's why people, you know, they they do that little mushroom or they do that, you know, DMT. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you were right. I saw all the dimensions. You know, my daughter comes to me the other day. She's like 24. And she says, mom. You were right about everything. I did mushrooms last week. I was like, yeah. She's like, you were right about everything. We're connected to everything. And I was like, awesome. Took me 12 years. All you needed to eat was a mushroom. Dude, I did this wrong, right? See these kids, they just haven't figured out. And so now she has a little bit more, more respect for crazy mom because she's had that experience. And, and again, that's why we kind of sometimes get pushed into those near death experiences or that mushroom or that journey where we, we, for a few minutes, we get to see that this isn't all there is. This is a very, very small part of what you are. And when we return you back to all of yourself, then you'll realize that the fifth dimension is just a change in perspective. It's a different radio station. So let's say that the third dimension is like one story. Imagine if you listen to a radio station and all they played was six songs. Sounds familiar, right? Well, if we were going to think about the fifth dimension, it's like satellite radio. You can listen to anything. You can listen to comedy. You can listen to rock. You can listen to podcasts. That's the only difference. So it's not like you have to, you know, get in good with God or like be promoted. You just literally have to be able to become more of a satellite with yourself so that you can receive that multidimensional choice. Because when you're driving with satellite radio on a long drive, it's a lot more fun to be able to go here, there, there, here, here. Now, notice that if I listen to comedy for one hour and maybe I listen to a book on tape and then less like rock and roll, some 80s over here, classic rock over here, am I changing? Am I different? No, but I get to have a different experience of myself with each song. I get to be rock and roll and go down memory lane and I get to learn something. And I get to know some, I get to laugh for a while, but do I change? No, I get to stay me, yet I get to have all those experiences. So that's really what the fifth dimension is, is it's a agreement, it's a choice, it's a realization that I have choice. So how do we get your body there? We got to go to the root because your body is like, this is the way it is. I wish it was different. And underneath your subatomic energy that is governed by your unconscious and superconscious mind says, no, we just need to break, break up your grinchiness, 
right? Break, break up your solidity, break up your pain, break up your, your trauma, your, um, your, you know, your, your stuck points. So how do we do that with energy through frequency and vibration? Everything is held together through vibration. Now we could say that vibration is like the idea of like the, the song. Okay. And frequency is like the genre, right? So it's just like, if you've got pain in your body, right, it's being held together by the memory of pain. All right. Now, unfortunately, memory vibrates. So what happens a lot of times is when you have something in your body that's being held together through pain, it's vibrating, okay? So you walk in, you hear a song enough, you start singing it, don't you? You're like, ah, now I'm singing that freaking song. This is law of attraction. When something vibrates, right, it creates a tuning fork experience, and therefore you keep attracting it, you keep hearing it. You keep hearing that song over and over again, which means that that trauma now starts to act like a magnet for more trauma, more experiences of pain, more of that. So that little song becomes now the six songs you hear. And we all have these traumas and these pain points and these stories and these belief systems in our energy field that we don't want. But when you're in a third dimensional reality, what you don't want is called resistance. And therefore, what you push away becomes attracted to you. So it's like, Ugh. so the more you want something gone, the more it's attached to you. The more you want something to change, the less it can change, right? Because you're trying to create change by looking at the solid pain instead of saying, I just need to find the vibration of heal or vibration of play or vibration of this. And I need to start vibrating my body to the point where that pain breaks up, that belief system changes. Now, what types of things help us break up these pains, right? So many things. I'm going to just run through a list so you can see how many things can break up pain. Okay. Anything in nature is vibrating at a higher frequency than your pain. That's why you feel good in nature, okay? Animals that are not traumatized or too domesticated, they are a higher frequency than your pain. Children that are being loved are vibrating higher than your pain, okay? Um, music, usually most kinds of music, even the dark stuff was made from a grief release, which is love, vibrates above your pain. Okay, so even if you're listening to violent music, it's still above your pain, okay, because it's creative, all right? So there's so many things, essential oils, but that's nature in a bottle, right? Okay, now let's think of things that really quickly resonate with the same vibration as pain. Other people in pain, huh, we seem to attract that, okay? Stories of pain, painful experiences, painful memories, painful, you know, um, thoughts. Okay. So when we are not constantly, consistently working to out vibrate or change the radio station, it becomes a default. Now I have been in energy medicine for a very long time. And I had this crazy frustration because as a medical intuitive and a clairvoyant, when I'm working with someone and we're moving energy, I can see that that pain is gone. I can see that. I can see that that vibration has broken up and returned to the natural rhythm of the soul. I'm witnessing it. I'm proud of myself, right? I'm taking the money and they're leaving. And then a week later, I'm getting them back in my office, laying on my table. And I'm like, how is this possible? And here's why. Okay. Remember, everything vibrates. So when I remove or your practitioner removes or you remove through whatever you're doing to change the radio station, okay? When it's removed, because it's been playing so long in your body, it's in the cloud. And that metaphor is that it sinks into the collective vibration of your storage. So it leaves your field, but it remains in your cloud like a ghost, all right, especially the longer you've had it. 
if you've had something for a really, really, really long time, it becomes its own form of consciousness, kind of like a ghost where it's just like playing over and over and over again we can eliminate it from all of the field of the body i can get it out of your theoretical field your energy field your mental field everything and i'm like it's gone but there's a blueprint in the cloud because it's been there for a long time right and this is where i literally started scratching my head as a practitioner because that's the worst feeling in the world to have someone come back with something different maybe but still in pain pain is pain okay so energy doesn't die, changes forms, right? And so today we're going to be changing the form of pain through frequency and vibration, but you will have homework. And why I closed my wellness centers and became a teacher instead of a hands-on healer was because I realized that it's not the session that heals you, right? The session just creates space between the pain for you. What you have to do is now vibrate health, vibrate a higher frequency, practice, 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 which means if there's toxic people in your life and we heal cancer in our session, you can't go back to the people that feel like cancer, right? You got to make changes in your physical reality. You have to change your critical mind that is a narcissist to yourself. You have to maybe change some other structures that are vibrating because what happens is pain is a magnet for other pain. So we remove the pain, but then you go back into the pain and then it downloads from the cloud. Does that make sense? And so what we want to do is we want to delete it from the cloud, which means that we want to we want to turn that ghost right into something else we want to change the structure in every plane even the subatomic blueprint whatever you've practiced the longest has a subatomic blueprint which means have you noticed that things are kind of returning back especially during retrogrades where you're like i thought i cleared this or this was gone but during a retrograde you'll go back into an old ignorant uh, energy signature and it will download from the cloud and you're like, mm, it's a ghost. So what we're doing is ghost hunting and we're doing some integration. So now what we also understand about frequency and vibration is that it vibrates, right? In a certain cluster of an atomic structure, like the chair you're sitting on is just atoms held together by intention, like nothing actually exists. And so, so does pain, right? But it's easier for your mind to focus on the bad stuff than the good stuff. Right. I always share this example and you can say someone all day long, you look beautiful, you look beautiful. And then someone out of the blue says your you know, ankle looks fat and it's all you can think about. Right. So, again, your brain is a problem solver. So it's going to go to the one negative thing to reinstall the pain. OK, now what this does for our clients, if you guys are energy healers, is it's it's it creates a, a lack of trust, because if I go and spend two hundred dollars for an energy, you know, work. And then a week later, I feel it, uh, you know, we cut cords and we did this. And then a week later, I don't feel better. I'm not going to trust that practitioner, am I? And maybe I have a pain body or a pain, a pain vibrational frequency of not trusting. All right. Think about your level of trust. Okay. So it's very hard to trust when we're working with energy because you can't see it. Right. You can't measure it. But you can. And the way that you see it and you measure it energy wise is through manifestation. What are you manifesting? Who are you manifesting? If your quality of people that are coming into your life right now are not bigger and better and more awesome, then it is because there is some part of pain sitting in your body that is a match to the people that are in your life. Right. And somehow you're saying yes to that, even if it's resistance. And therefore, you keep downloading it from the cloud, no matter how much self-work you do, right? And so some of these things are in our blind spots. But I'm going to show you how today to break up all of these blind spots. Because in order for us to get to satellite radio, where all the fun is, right, and have choices and opportunities and get to explore different aspects of ourselves and not be so solid, be more malleable with that idea of water, what we have to do is we have to transcend or integrate the pain frequencies, 
So the main frequencies that we're going to be working with today, all right, no brainer. Number one, fear. Okay. Think about fear right now in this idea of time's running out. Am I going to go? Is so-and-so going to go? Am I going to have enough? What's going to happen to the world? Think about where you have logical and illogical fear. Okay. That is vibrating, right? So even if you've changed the name of fear, and I'll tell you some other things that are fear, but don't look like fear, anxiety, depression, worry, doubt, judgment. These are all other names for fear. Okay. So cool. Include it. It's in the pot for today. All right. So we're going to be working on fear, humiliation. Why don't you put yourself out there? What are you afraid of? Why are you not turning your volume all the way up? All right. Letting your freak flag fly. Okay. All the way. Humiliation. Okay. Which basically means that who I am is not good enough, not deserving, not worthy, not right, not pretty enough, not smart enough. That's all the energy of humiliation. Okay. Then we have the showstoppers. All right. Humiliation we can use sometimes to our benefit because we really try to be better. Right. Fear sometimes we can use as a benefit. But these next two, this is where the show stops shame and guilt. In shame and guilt, vibrations held into the body by stories or God knows what, you find yourself on a hamster wheel. This is your hamster wheel, shame and guilt. Okay. Because when you feel shame, you're constantly trying to not feel shame. So you tend to over nurture. Okay. And you tend to shame others as a way to tantrum. All right. Guilt, you find yourself in a life of service, not servicing yourself. You're like repenting in this unconscious way. So shame and guilt is your hamster wheel. We think it's fear. It's not. I've done a lot of amazing things. Yet terribly afraid. But shame and guilt, I find myself circling on the hamster wheel. Does this make sense? Okay. So we're going to go to the next one and we're just kind of dropping into these like more ice vibrations that are heavy. They have a gravitational weight to them. They really pull you down. They make you wait. They make you feel heavy, right? The next one we would call like passive aggressive or angry. I've noticed that empaths, we tend to be angry on the inside and we tend to be more passive. So it comes off like maybe more aloof, but there is a lot of anger in sensitive empaths that you'd never know was there. And this is going to find its way in attracting very angry people around you. And you're like, I'm not angry. If you are attracting angry people, you are. But again, it may look and feel differently because it's being processed through your kind, gentle heart, but you're still angry. All right. Anger is just grief's bodyguard. Think about when you're really angry, you're misunderstood, you're disempowered, you're being judged, you're being attacked, right? You're being abandoned. So if we really look at anger, it's a, an attempt to get our power back. That's what it really is. It makes us very hot. Notice how your body gets very hot when you have a fever in order to heal. So anger is actually a very powerful emotion and it does not keep that hamster wheel unless you suppress it. Which means that if you really just used anger as your leverage point, you would move higher frequency. But because we're like, I'm not allowed to be angry, right? Then we suppress it. And now we have inflammation and gut issues and we're not alkaline and we're very acidic and we're very much thinkers and, and we're very like critical, right? We think, oh, my ego is critical. No, your pain is critical. Okay. So. After that, we're going to drop into grief. Now, grief is the threshold point to love. If there was a coin, heads and tails, grief one side, love on the other side, they're very interchangeable. Notice how the more you love something, the more you're afraid to lose it. All right. Notice how when you fall madly in love with something, you feel terrified of losing it. You get real crazy obsessive. Okay. So this is the threshold point. So we have so much of that. humanity's power right now is in grief. It is the doorway to love. 
but we're all terrified of loss, but we've already lost everything. So technically we're just in PTSD of loss. And because we're terrified of losing again and more, we literally suppress grief into all those other emotions I just listed. So fear, humiliation, shame, guilt, anger is actually all hidden grief. That's it. So we're really just working with one, grief. And grief is, I have lost a place to put my love, a way to share my love, okay? It's homeless love. That's all grief is. Think about right now where you cannot put your love. Who won't receive it? Who's not there? Who can't hear you? Who can't see you? What doesn't notice you, right? Who has abandoned you? Who can you not touch anymore, okay? What can you not get? See, we don't realize that grief is held in time we've lost, money we've lost, people we've lost, respect we've lost for ourselves, right? Dreams and hopes we've lost. Disappointment is another definition of depression. And because we are sensitive beings, what we do to cope with everything I just described is we focus vicariously on helping people who feel exactly how we feel, which means because like attracts like, and I'm holding pain in my body, I am going to become a hero, a rescuer, right? And I say, I'm an empath. I become, I see your pain. And I believe that by helping you with your pain, then that will relieve mine somehow. But it does to a certain extent, but we also have to abandon our own pain to work on yours, all right? So then we have self-abandonment. Now we can't even feel our own pain. And you're like, well, I don't even feel pain. I'm good. I'm just worried about my daughter. Mm, you see? So we have to say that everything in the universe is a byproduct of you being reflected so when I abandon myself to go heal someone else's anger or work with someone else's pain, then what happens is I move deeper into grief because now I have abandoned my own. Because when your pain is projecting, it vibrates mine to the surface and it makes me very uncomfortable. Like you say, oh, I don't want my, my mom to die. Why? Because I don't want her to be in pain. She won't be. Why do you want to, why are you afraid to lose her? Well, because I love her and I need her. Exactly. You see, there is a threshold point between really caring about others and caring about how you're going to feel through the experience. Watching someone else in pain is almost unbearable. This is why we dedicated so much of our lives to making sure other people don't feel pain because then we don't have to feel our own. Okay. But if you are having a hard time getting satellite radio right now and you're hearing those same six songs, it is because you have ignored your pain or you have repurposed it into something else like people pleasing or rescuing or saving or becoming a busy workaholic, right? Or you've channeled it into a disease or maybe you've channeled it into a money issue and that keeps you constantly moving, trying to move forward. But see, the soul at a subatomic level is nothing but abundance. Your soul is the ocean. Now you feel like one drop because that's where you're focused. But technically, all you'd have to do is vibrate higher and become all that is and attract all that you desire. And I guarantee this is how it works because I've spent time in all these different dimensions. Now, I know it's easier said than done. Okay, but what we want to do today is we want to break up all of these pain bodies and move them into the true frequency of who you are so that we can start vibrating this. This is what I've learned in quantum fitness is if I take, let's say, shame and I turn it into innocence and I begin to vibrate innocence, right, figure that out. It disappears from the cloud because I repurposed in and I have alchemized it. 
So all we're doing is playing the duality game here. We're saying, well, I, this is hot and this is cold, right? This is wrong and this is right. And inherently, everything that I have done to feel guilty or shame from, from was from an innocent place because there's no bad people. There is just action done in pain. Every person who has hurt another person was in pain. And if you've made mistakes or failed or chose the wrong people or spent money you didn't have, it was coming from pain. And that is innocent. Okay. You are innocent in that. And we need to return your blueprint to innocence. The only way to clear shame and guilt. I'm innocent. Okay. It's like, if you, here's how you know that you have guilt and shame in your body is like when you get pulled over, like, Ooh, you didn't even do anything. And yet there's guilt and shame. Or, you know, when someone's like, we need to talk that text, all of a sudden your nervous system just freaks out. Right. And this is how, you know, that that pain is sitting in your body somewhere is if you hear on the news, you know, the world is going to hell in a handbag and you get scared of that. It's because it already is in your body. All right. So we want to, we, we don't even want to neutralize it. We want to change form. Energy doesn't die. It changes form. So with our energy medicine today and our light language and our quantum healing, you're going to be doing some interactive things with me today. We're going to turn all of these lower gravitational, very dense, ice-like, cold vibrations that keep you playing those same six songs. We're going to lighten you up. Okay. We're going to move you over to satellite radio. And then your job all week long is going to be practicing the new frequencies, which means you're going to speak it, you're going to say it, you're going to, you're going to practice it. And what this does is because we've eliminated it in this class or in this session, and if you can practice the opposite of it, then what happens is there's no empty space. Think about it. Think about it. If you clear everything off of your phone, yet it has a default setting. What's going to happen when you turn your phone back on? The default setting is going to project back in. Unless I re deprogram and then reprogram, which means that third dimension does not like empty space. It wants to fill the space. So if we just take all your grief away, what's left? What are you going to be practicing? What is ego? Ego has no job. All it is is guilt. If I do not give ego the job of innocence, even though it's going to feel weird at first, then the ego will go back to what it's comfortable with. How many times have you guys wanted to make that quantum leap and you were so sick and tired of being sick and tired over here and you couldn't quite get over there and then you were craving being back over there, right? Because that's comfortable. I know that. At least I can do that. Like I got to go back to that job. I got to go back to that guy. And the only reason why is because you didn't, become something new all right so we're gonna play we're gonna and once i get started with the light language it's not gonna be english so that's why i'm doing it all in english first just so your ego has an understanding of what we're doing here because once we get going it's going to be boom 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 boom, and we're going to be integrating and then you're going to be practicing so we're going to shame we're going to turn shame and guilt which means that you need to really decide right now right now if you're ready to let go of guilt and shame, right? Because again, without surrender, like if you're like, no, I need to keep being guilty for a little bit longer, okay? If you're not really ready to turn this over to a higher you, see, it's not like you don't have to be guilt and shame. You're just giving it to a higher you to be neutralized and transcended, okay? It's a gift in disguise. You've helped a lot of people out of guilt and shame. Don't, don't, don't take it away. We're just going to now say we've done with, we're done with that experience, right? We're done with that particular song and we would like to replace it with innocence, which means if you think about right now with your mental space, something that you maybe feel shame or guilt about a choice, a decision, an unconscious moment, right? Being in pain and doing something. Think about really who you were right now. You were innocent, okay? You were unconscious. You were asleep. You were in pain. You were scared, right? You thought that was the right thing for you. You did the best you could from that place where you were. 
Because if you were like, oh, no, I did it on purpose, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> you would not be here right now. You would be somewhere else because this is the vibration that we have all agreed that we're done or you wouldn't be here. OK, and so if you're really done and you're really, 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 really ready to let go of any past shame and guilt, even if there's something right now that you're kind of like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. It's perfect. Just say. I'm finished with this experience. Like I am ready to turn this over to the me that the version of me that knows how to transcend this because who we're channeling today is you. We're not bringing in the angels because you don't need them. Okay. We're bringing in the higher part of you, the part of you that's in the future on the beach, sipping my ties right? The part of you that's already gone through this experience. So who could forgive you more than you? Who knows you more than you? So today we're channeling you. So we're going to have your light language. We're going to have your gifts and talents come through. We're going to have your truth. And the you that's over there knows that you are innocent. Can you receive that? Can you receive that? Perfect. All right. So let's go to humiliation. What is the opposite of humiliation? Right? Dignity. It's not humility. Humility has a little victim energy attached to it. We're going to go dignified. Okay. Think about when you were humiliated. I mean, how many of you guys got humiliated because your nose was the wrong shape or you didn't have the credential after your name or, you know, you didn't, you didn't ha look the part or know the part or you felt a moment of consciousness so you couldn't show up right? Like really look at humiliation at its core. It's such a, you're such an innocent, you're such an innocent space when you're humiliated. It's usually when you are the most genuinely authentic authentic that you get humiliated. Did you know that? It is in those moments of pure, authentic, childlike bliss that you will find yourself humiliated. So the opposite of humiliation is dignity. And what is dignity? It's self-respect. It's self-worth. Great. You think my nose is big, but I think it's pretty cute. Or at least I like it. Okay. This is where kind of like our self-love has to come a little bit through. So, and some of you guys will have to work with these like opposite energies, which will be perfect because it'll really take you on a, a journey this week because you're going to leave this session and you're going to act innocent. You're going to act dignified, which means you're going to show up differently for yourself. But you don't call somebody and say, I'm innocent. You say, I'm choosing to be innocent. I am choosing to be dignified right now. And you're going to work on that frequency so that when we get to next week, we can even get further ahead. Because I'd like to get you guys ready for 60 because 5D is just a big shopping mall, right? 60 is where you actually get to wear and do everything that you buy and have, okay? So let's look at anger. Anger is just grief. Grief is loss, okay? So you're going to need to put your love somewhere. If someone is gone or not uh, ghosting you or, or you lost something or someone, after this session, you're going to find a place to put your love. I don't care where. In quantum fitness, we do art projects. We do repurposing. We do music. It doesn't matter. You'll find a place to put anything that comes up because what this session is going to do, yes, it's going to integrate it, but it's also going to bring it up so that you can turn it into something else. You're going to repurpose it and take that old yucky chair and you're going to make a shelf out of it. All right. You're going to repurpose this with your higher self today. All right. So what is the opposite of judgment? The opposite of judgment is intuition. Judgment is black, white. I like, I don't like. Intuition, it just is. It just is. Okay. It just is. So we're going to change judgment back into intuition. The only reason we had to become judgers is because we taught, we were taught that our intuition was wrong. So we had to figure out an alternative to intuition, which is judgment. All right. Intuition happens, in, um, judgment happens in the mind. Intuition happens in the gut. All right. All right. Let's take fear. 
All right. We're going to change fear into courage, which means that you're going to be facing some fears this week, but you're going to have your higher self with you. Because what we're going to do is we're going to first and foremost, break up the pain of these imprints that are sitting all the way deep into your field. And once it dissipates, your higher self will now move into that space. So where fear was, we're going to take fear and put courage, which means higher self is going to whittle in and be in that space and help you act this out all week, which you'll notice after this session, your thoughts are going to change, right? Your insights are going to change, but it's your job to act on it. Because the other ones will be there lingering like a song in the, in, the, in the distance, still be there in the cloud. But for the next three days, your higher self will be very present in what we did. And what you can do is create a whole new imprint and put this information into the cloud so that that old information just becomes the new. So it's not hiding and ghosting you. It's literally changed. Does this make sense? Okay. So we've got shame and guilt. We're changing that. We're changing humiliation into dignity. We're turning anger into art, right? Creativity, expression, right? Because all it is is grief. Grief is homeless love. We're going to give our love a new home. Get yourself a puppy. Get yourself an art project. Stop worrying on that guy who's not calling you, right? Put your love somewhere that you can express and receive with it. This will definitely be a game changer. All right. So then we're going to turn fear into courage. Higher self will help you with that. Um, seeing if I missed any here. Shame, guilt, humiliation, anger, judgment. Uh, yeah, we're good. Okay. So that is our plan today is we're going to bring our higher selves in. You're going to set an intention with me that you are ready to basically be the real you. Okay. Shame and guilt is not who you are. You're not angry. You're not humiliated. You've got imprints, trauma, and pain sitting in your body that make you a vibrational match for that. That's it. Okay. You are this clean slate that we would like to keep nice and open so that you may become, think about what you could, what you could become from innocence versus constantly hiding shame and guilt, right? Or constantly trying to wear a mask so you don't get humiliated, which means you don't want to fail again so you don't put yourself out there, all right? Anger, grief, bodyguard, this is why you stay with the creepy guys and the toxic relationships and you are obligated and you stay in bad jobs, right? Anything that feels like Groundhog Day and a hamster wheel is shame and guilt, all right? And it's grief in disguise, right? You think I don't want to be homeless. Okay. The universe will always take care of you. Even with all this icky stuff, still manage. It's like you have two hands tied behind your back and the universe still shows up. Maybe not how you want. Maybe it feels 10 steps forward, 10 steps back, but imagine what it would, what it would be able to do for you if there was a clear path, which means that everything I just listed, fear, shame, humiliation, grief, anger, those are walls. And the walls that we create out of pain that are held on to pain block your abundance, block your freedom, and block your real intimate relationships that can hear you, that can see you. The people who really need what you have inside, okay? And the people that are grateful and appreciative of what you are. See, we think that the wall is being created outside of us, but all of these frequencies are walls. So you can see how many walls the universe has to get through just to get you to break even every month. Still, It's still showing up, but it's showing up through maybe six or seven walls. So we're going to take the walls down. We're going to bring your higher self in. We're going to be speaking lots of different languages today as light codes come in because there's lots of different versions of you. I'm going to get out of the way. I am going to participate because, hello, this is awesome right? I'm going to receive two and we're going to integrate ourselves together. We're going to give ourselves permission to expand, permission to play, permission to be authentic, permission to let go, surrender. I don't want to carry this burden anymore. We're going to let go of the wait time because there's no waiting in the universe, no time and space. There's no patience required. 
All we're going to do after this is practice, prepare, play for the new energy. It'll already be in your body. So you're already 90% there, but you have to close the gap with your behavior and your actions. So I get everybody's approval, right? Okay. Even if you do 10% of this, your life will improve 100%. So please, you know, you are worth this. You deserve this. You have helped hundreds of people overcome guilt, shame, humiliation. You have shown up for hundreds of people in your life. Who's shown up for you? Okay. Well, your higher self's here saying, I want to show up for you, but you have to let me in. And the only way you let me in is to let go. You're holding these walls up because you think that somehow it's protecting you. The humiliation protects you. The shame and guilt keeps you in line, right? It does not. You're a free-flowing river of abundance. And maybe it's going to look different afterwards, but your higher self will be in your body after this because we're going to make space when we tear these walls down. And it's your job to now Learn how to live with your higher self instead of your lower self, who's been your cellmate this whole time. All right. So let's just do a little grounding. Let's do a little intention setting. Let's do a little surrender. Okay. And you can go back to this recording anytime and re listen. It's not like you're, you know, sometimes you just need to kind of get a reminder. All right. And then once we're done, your homework will come in and we're there. All right. Very simple. Quantum healing should be very simple. And all we're looking for is what's different. Don't look for bad or good, because sometimes higher self will put a little challenge for you to be able to show up innocently, okay, or show up dignified, but it's perfect because you'll be able to practice, all right? All right, let's take a breath and let's really like shake our bodies out so that we can make.